Good evening. Thank you very much for coming out on this drizzly November night. My name is Sharon Anderson, and I work with Cornell Cooperative Extension here in Tompkins County as the environmental educator. And we're one of the sponsors of tonight's program, along with Fleeced. Um, we do have not enough copies, but we had a handout that just gives the agenda for the evening and the names of the presenters. If you have an extra copy or you don't need yours, you've looked at it and you're willing to pass it on, um, we always guess with these how many people will come and we're delighted that we exceeded our expectations. Gas drilling, as you know, is a very hot topic in our community as well as communities in southern New York and across the border into Pennsylvania. Um, as Cooperative Extension, our role is to provide information to people so that you can make up your own mind, so that you can have the information you need um, to make your own decisions, to help your communities, your municipalities make decisions. Um, people who get involved with gas drilling are often very passionate about it. And um, we try to represent a variety of perspectives, a variety of information tonight. But I'll just say, please listen to get the information you can from tonight. Um, and please use it with friends and neighbors as you can. Um, we do a variety of programs, both um, with FLEECE, with groups like the Farm Bureau, um, the, the Tompkins Landowner Coalition, to try to reach a variety of topics and a variety of people. And we appreciate the dedication that people with all kinds of different perspectives um, bring to this topic, because it's really important that we all know and we all think about this. Um, we're fortunate to have that additional time beyond what Pennsylvania has to, to wrestle with some of these issues. Issues. I'm going to start by just talking uh, through a few slides before I turn it over to the presenters. And I'll just say one thing about gas drilling is there's a lot we don't know. There's many unknowns at this point. We have the experience of Texas and other places that have had uh, shale gas drilling, um, but often their geology is different, their climate is different, their regulatory framework is different. Um, probably Pennsylvania is the most like what we have here, but even there, it's a fairly new activity that's been going on for two or three years, which compared to gas and oil export, export, exploration other places is a fairly short window of time. So we're all still learning. People are gathering information and trying to pull it together the best they can. With compulsory integration in particular, a lot of the effort started with conventional gas drilling, which is much more a puddle of gas like this picture shows. So it's a pool of gas. They do a well and they um, will actually, ju just with a vertical um, well casing and drilling, uh, pull that, that gas up. Uh, you can see that if you were the person who lived where that red line indicates, you would want to make sure that your rights and your monetary um, gain would be protected. So you wouldn't want someone to come from underneath your land and pull out all the natural gas or the oil or whatever it is. Um, and so there were things about compulsory integration that were intended to be protective of landowners and their rights. What we're dealing with now with the Marcellus Shale is this horizontal gas drilling. And what you see here is just a schematic of a well. Frequently, um, there's one well pad, but there's multiple wells that will go out for that. Could be six, could be 12. It's, it's going to vary with different companies and the location. That piece of rock is a picture of a piece of shale. So you can see it's definitely not a puddle or a pool of gas. Uh, it's fairly dense rock and it has lots of tiny little bubbles in it. So clearly my little picture of bubbles is not at all to scale and that's actually carbonated beverage. But the idea is the same. That's what you're talking about. Think of that rock with lots of teeny gas bubbles in it. And that's why they fracture it, is to get that gas so it escapes and so um, they can produce it and, and actually use it. Um, but you don't have to worry in the same way about someone's gonna take gas from underneath your property with that soda straw kind of analogy. 
Uh, this is what a spacing unit might look like, and I'm sure from the other speakers you'll hear about spacing units. But very briefly, a gas company, when they have a bunch of leases in the area, will draw a map and will bring it to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, or DEC for short, and will will have this map that says, this is where I want my spacing unit to be, these little boundaries. And within those boundaries, they have to have 60% of the land area leased. Um, and so again, we have our spacing units, and that might be what the patterns of the wells underground would look like. There'd be a single well pad, and then going out from that, multiple different wells. Now you can see how that crosses many property lines. And from a gas company point of view, um, this next slide, whoops, nope, sorry. Let me, I'm gonna actually skip through this, this slide. Um, from a gas, company's point of view, if those red X's are property owners that did not lease, then they're limited by where those laterals can go. So from a gas company point of view, it's much more efficient and economically for them if all of those people that didn't lease get integrated into or pooled um, into this parcel, into the spacing unit. Um, those three property owners, even though they have fairly small pieces of property, the the white lines are imaginary property lines, um, would stop a number of laterals from going off. So we, we have sort of the conflict of, you know, property owners where if they want a lease and want the royalties, a property owner who doesn't could uh, block them. But on the same token, someone who doesn't want a lease uh, with the compulsory integration might have a gas line going underneath them. So that is sort of a very brief introduction to the top, oops, to the topic. And from a gas, again, from a gas company's point of view, their feeling is if we didn't do uh, compulsory integration, we would have to, they would have to have lots of individual wells and it wouldn't be this one wellhead with many wells from it as in this. So um, again, just a few words of introduction.